is with some technology here and I think this is working it does say that it's live it does say that the timer is kicking over and hopefully some of the smart drivers will get over here to this live stream because I know that I scheduled one unfortunately <laughs> for whatever reason the phone is not doing what I need it to do so if you're there leave a comment in the chat uh, Corey will show you that this is the other stream next week I'll know that when I go live at seven o'clock I will not schedule one because for whatever reason it's not working through the phone app but here we are and I am in Wingham Ontario as some of you know I'm on holidays and I'm still doing a live stream still looking after people <laughs> helping people to get their driver's license because I know there's lots of people at this time of year especially after COVID and things opening up that you're looking to get your driver's license drive more defensively and you know be safe on the roadways, be a safer, smarter driver. So tonight we're gonna to talk about uh, eight tips that I have for you on driving while you're on vacation. So this is something to do with people who are going to be licensing, especially if you're in some of the tourist areas and those types of things and you're working towards your license, you're gonna to have to know some of these things that people are going to be in your area and they're going to be on vacation, they're gonna be driving slower, they may have got lost, uh, how to identify these people if the vehicle has got kayaks on it or they're pulling a trailer camper van the vehicle is packed to the gills and the whole family's in the vehicle then there's a good possibility that they could be lost and you know driving slowly driving unpredictably and those types of things so eight tips for driving while you're on vacation the first thing you want to do is you want to do vehicle maintenance especially if you're going to be traveling farther than 250 miles uh, from your home base and you're away from your trusted mechanics and people that you deal with all the time you're going to be dealing with other mechanics other shops on the roadways and those types of things and the last thing you want to have to have happen is that your vehicle breaks down so change the oil if you haven't changed the oil in a while then do that do the regular maintenance make sure all your fluids are full make sure you have good windshield wipers on the vehicle if you have any cracks in the windshield or chips or those types of things then make sure you get those repaired as well uh, you might even want to invest in getting your vehicle cleaned and detailed i know that my personal i just drove here to ontario which is 3700 kilometers 2300 miles and i spent some money and some time to get my vehicle detailed professionally detailed it was really actually quite nice because i have an older vehicle and it you know years and years of grime and people sitting in it and those types of things so it was very much worth getting the vehicle detailed uh, check your tires if you haven't had your tires rotated in a while then definitely do that get a professional tire person to check the tires get them uh, done and whatnot so do all of the maintenance right and then do a mini pre-trip yourself make sure that all the lights work the brake lights work the signals work front and rear high beams low beams especially if you're planning on driving at night and those types of things and if you're towing trailers right you're uh, going on holidays with your trailers or you're sitting with others you're going to be camping and those types of things and make sure you're doing all of that as well okay uh second thing second tip tip number two plan your trip okay plan your route where are you going to be going what roads are you going to be going on where are you going to stay accommodations and those types of things and how far are you going to travel every day uh you know if you're going to be driving 600 miles a day that's that's a hard push for most people who are going to be driving uh you know if you're on holidays and relaxing and those types of things you know two or three hundred miles that might be as far as you want to travel in a day just so that you're not wearing yourself out and you know running yourself silly uh, because you are on holidays remember <laughs> and we want to keep this kind of fun so uh plan your route and then number three ties into number two and planning your route uh, make sure that you book accommodations, book hotels and those types of things you're going to be staying in them. Uh, we booked our hotel up in Wawa there and uh, we got there and every hotel in the little town was booked. Uh, unfortunately, we had booked our hotel. There was another, unfortunately, people who had an emergency, they were looking to, to get a hotel room the same night we were in there and uh, they couldn't get a hotel room because they were all booked. All right, uh, number four. This is a little pet peeve of mine if you're out on the highways and you're driving and traveling and those types of things. Make sure that you're doing a constant speed. If you don't know how to use cruise control, please learn how to use cruise control. I'll put a video up in the corner for you there. Uh, have a look at that and learn how to use cruise control because there's you just cannot keep a constant speed on a fuel pedal. 
uh, it's just nigh impossible, especially if you're driving a larger vehicle, if you've rented an RV and you're driving an RV, you can't keep a constant speed, okay? And if people tell me that they can, no, that's, that's just bunk. And there's nothing more frustrating when you're on the highway and you're following somebody who's 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. That's incredibly frustrating for traffic behind them. It's like, you know, even if you're just gonna drive the posted speed limit, pick one speed and drive one speed, all right? Fuel, tip number, Tip number five, okay, for vacationing and defensive driving. Once your fuel tank gets down to a half tank, three eighths of a tank of fuel, start looking for a fuel station because you don't wanna be out there and you don't wanna be running out of fuel. You don't wanna, especially if you don't know where you're going. You don't wanna have that other concern of having to look for fuel and those types of things. Especially if you're running through the night or you're running in the early morning at hours and those types of things, make sure that you keep your fuel tank above uh, half a tank and uh, keep lots of fuel in the fuel tank. <laughs> we we kind of made that mistake. Uh, we were traveling from Winnipeg to Kenora and early in the morning we left it like you know four o'clock in the morning. Uh, didn't put fuel in the in the truck and we basically rolled into Kenora on fumes with the with the fuel and you know the low fuel light on <laughs> and it was a bit of an error on my part because you know you don't really know how far Kenora is or how far into town you have to go, uh, you know, because you're in Northern Ontario or in a remote place. So make sure that you keep fuel in your vehicle. And if you're, you know, once you get to half a tank, three eighths of a tank of fuel, start looking for a fuel station. Like I said, especially if you're running in the early mornings and those types of things. Tip number six, uh, you know, don't just rely on your GPS. And if you're going into another Canada, if you're in the States and you're coming into, into Canada, know that you're gonna pay roaming charges for your phone if your phone is on GPS. So look for landmarks, look for the signs for the highways that you're on and be vigilant about making sure that you're seeing those every half an hour or so, uh, because you don't wanna get off the main road. It's pretty easy in some of these smaller towns, especially if you're running on a, a state road or something like that and uh, they have a bypass around the city that you're gonna have to follow those signs to get around the city. So know that, that you're gonna have to follow the signs, you're gonna have to be reading the road signs, make sure you're reading all of the road signs, all of this will provide landmarks for you to navigate and route plan and get to where you want to go. Don't just re reply, rely on your GPS because your GPS can be wrong and sometimes you just have to look out the windshield to get to where you're going all right number seven passing you get on some of these state roads some of these two-lane skinny roads uh, that are not multi-lane you're going to have to pass most of these two-lane roads are going to have passing lanes every 10 or 15 miles you're just going to have to wait <coughs> excuse me if you're not comfortable passing then you're going to have to wait for a passing lane but look at the road markings in the center of the road and know when it's safe to pass. When you get the dotted line on your side or it's a dotted, one single dotted line going up the road, know that that's when it's gonna be safe to pass. You're gonna need a big gap to be able to pass safely because you're gonna be out in that other lane for a fair bit of time, maybe 20, 30, 45 seconds. So this is kind of a skill that you're gonna to have to practice. This is a skill you're gonna to have to be able to do. So passing on two lane roads, sometimes if you're not comfortable with it, just make wait until the passing lanes come you know it's going to be 10 or 15 minutes up the road and you're just going to have to bear with it so know that for the purposes of passing tip number eight this is kind of a bonus tip if you're going to be driving at night and you know most of you are not going to be driving at night because you're on holidays right we don't want to be driving at night but if you do need to drive at night you have to catch a ferry or you have to get to an airport or you have to catch a train or whatever and you need to leave early and you're driving at night just be very careful at night especially if you're in remote areas and those types of things because there's going to be animals on the roadway, moose and deer and other small animals and whatnot coming out onto the roadways. One of the things that I always do at night when I'm driving, you know, try and drive with your high beams on as much as possible. Make sure you flip that little lever underneath the center mirror so that lights aren't reflecting in and, and fatiguing you. Turn your dash lights down as low as you can stand them. And if you can, this isn't always possible, but if you're driving in the early hours of the morning where there's very few tr other vehicles on the roadway, make sure that you're trying to follow another vehicle and follow it at a distance. And I always kind of, you know, it's kind of my animal buster is what I call it, where I'm following another vehicle. 
uh, because then I know that, you know, the road's going to be clear and there aren't going to be animals standing out on the roadways and those types of things. Because in my experience of hitting animals and finding animals on the roadway, unfortunately, there's very little that you can do about it. They just come out of nowhere and, you know, you hit them before you can really do anything. They talk about, you know, seeing the reflection of your lights in their eyes and those types of things. I just do not, that has not been my experience. My experience is, is that I, all of a sudden, uh, there they are. So that's the last one in terms of, you know, night driving. Make sure that you keep the glass clean as well. Also, that will reduce fatigue. And you know, if you're driving at night and you're just tired, make sure you just stop because you don't want to risk being involved in a crash because you're tired and those types of things. And this live stream here, it's telling me that there isn't anybody on this live stream. There's nobody here. So uh, I'm just going to leave it there. I don't even know if this is working, if this is live streaming. Uh, it is counting over and those types of things, but uh, like I said, I don't know whether it is. So those are eight tips uh, that you can use for defensive driving and driving in the summertime and on vacations and people who are licensed, uh, getting a license and those types of things, uh, you know, know if you're in a tourist town and those types of things, you are going to have a lot of tourists around and those types of things, RVs and whatnot. And like I said, you know, you're driving an RV, it's a bigger vehicle, it's going to slow down on the hills and those types of things, constant speed because it's incredibly frustrating to be behind traffic that's not maintaining a constant speed when you're out on the highway so if you don't know how to use cruise learn how to use cruise because that's kind of my pet peeve so thanks very much we'll leave it there for tonight have a great night and remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer all the best